My nickname is Murph, the fan is one thing. Welcome. Wow. Okay, well, first off, good morning. Um, yesterday was a crazy ride. Um, roller coaster of emotions, I guess. <laughs> first of all, with the whole test in my mind and oh, the days were adding up like it was it was 10 plus hours of labor every day but i think as soon as you're going to start a van conversion you sort of know what i mean is you don't just work with labor work on your van like you also think about what you've done the whole day and then you're going to start thinking about what you should do the next day and if you're going to make it and basically you're planning and thinking about stuff eight hours a day and then you have labor work of 10 hours a day and then afterwards you sleep <laughs> the rest you sleep the remaining six hours if you sleep because uh well the funny thing is is that the days coming up to the test or to the inspection i was sleeping terribly and then at the day of the inspection like when it was going to the inspection that night i slept like a baby like a like not a, not like the crying kind like the ah uh, i haven't had a <laughs> sleep like that in ages which is really weird at, at a moment of peak stress my body thinks you know what you should have a rest mate <laughs> which i guess i appreciate um now the van is been approved by well it's 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 been approved as a camper or uh, approved as a camper but i still have to pay an extra tax in holland as soon as it becomes a camper my signature is on the papers upstairs i just have to send it to them to the tax office in holland um, which i'm gonna do today as well as soon as that's out the door i have to pay a, a sum as soon as i pay that sum the company who did the inspection for the camper van can actually give me a license plate. As soon as I have that license plate, boom, it's a camper. Um, okay, so let's get this energy sorted. I'm done talking, I wanna see what this looks like. This thing costs uh, 100 and something, 125 I believe. This basically is the, uh, is the machine that I've been talking about that a cable is coming from my uh, dynamo a cable these two the black one and the right one uh, the red one they come from my dynamo that's in my car but because i have a smart dynamo you can't just tap in from it with a cable have it run through a small machine which is about 40 quid and then run it into your battery that's not how it works your dynamo wouldn't know that it needs to charge or it wouldn't know which battery to charge because it's uh it's a smart one it, it sort of figures out what, what, what it needs to do and what it needs to give energy like when your battery from your car your start battery runs low the dynamo thinks like oh now i need to run now i need to run now i need to get it up again but this machine makes sure that your battery or your dynamo knows that this battery needs power as well. So if your start battery is full, or at least it has enough energy, this battery will still ask for power and this machine will give it to him. This machine will say, you know what, dynamo, you, sh you should stop running again and you should give him energy as well. But the thing is, this machine is a lot more expensive than the other machine. The other machine is like a small black thingy. It's about 40 quid or 50 quid. This is 150 because that other dynamo uh, or that other machine just takes power from your dynamo as soon as it starts running. It's direct power. The full power that your dynamo will give to your normal battery, which is quite a lot of voltages and amps. Well, I think it's a high amp. It's The voltage isn't too high. It's high amps. So your cable has to be a lot thicker. It has to be uh, 50. And that cable costs about 12 or 14 euros a meter. No, it's 12. This costs about three per meter. So because I have this machine and a smart dynamo, this cable can be thinner. So even though this machine is more expensive, the cable is cheaper and that other machine is cheaper, but the cable is way more expensive. So 
all in all, their costs are about the same. I think with the other Dynamo, like the, the well, basically the stupid Dynamo, and the uh, the cheap uh, machine, I think you're around two fifty with cable and all. And this is with cable three hundred, I believe. So yeah, so this is more expensive, but so as you can see, like we haven't used black and red wire everywhere but sometimes it's blue and brown brown suggests red blue is black so this is your positive and this is your negative well i guess you can say br for brown is brown red and then blue without an r so bl is black blue black hey <laughs> There you, there you go. So brown is BR, is brown red, and blue is BL, is blue black. So, hey. So we've got a fuse. We've got the gathering block, which all my cables come to. This basically measures how much power is being used from your battery, which goes in between the black, uh, gathering block I guess it says to system to battery minus okay so I have to turn this around this goes to my battery this goes to the gathering block okay so this is the paper that I use this is from by nomads they have a very handy well, I guess you can sort of call it a visual representation of what your electronic works is gonna look like so Paper also, paper also, paper also. Long story short.
By now, as I'm filming this, um, I've gone through France, northern Italy, drove all the way down to so southern Italy, stayed in Sicily for about a month, um, and I have charged everything, my laptops, fridge, I've charged it all with this setup. I've been on the power on a camping once.
one day of the trip that it took me about three months. So it has uh, withstand the test of travel. So yeah, I could go over it a bit. So right down here, you have the charger for your dynamo or the charger that charges from your dynamo. Then you here you have the MPPT charger from the solar panels. And everything is fused on the red wires. Um, this fuse, however, blew out once. And you're probably wondering, huh, why did it blow out? That's not good. No, it wasn't. As you can see on here, it says 800, which means that this machine, this inverter, can withstand up to 800 watts, or it can it can transfer 800 watts, basically. Um, this fuse, at first, was 40 amps. 40 amp fuse means it can take up to like 500 watts, maybe. Maybe 450, 500, something about that, uh, along those lines. Why did I choose for a, a lower amp uh, fuse was because there's an internal fuse in the box. If that blows, you need to get it to a uh, Victron mechanic because you're not allowed to open it yourself. As soon as you open it yourself, basically something on the machine is screwed and y you won't have any guarantees anymore. Or, um, yeah, basically a, a mechanic won't do anything about it anymore. So, I choose a lower amp fuse to sort of back up, blow out before the actual fuse blows out in the machine itself. Going for a 40 amp fuse is too low if you have an 800 watt machine. The machine doesn't really mean that much, but the equipment that you use. You can go, if you have 800 like me, you can go up to 60 amp, 63 amp, I believe. Um, again, the question, why did it blow out? The machinery, or like the... the, the the stuff that I used wasn't really that high of a voltage, watt wattage. Usually it hangs around 160 watts, maybe 200, maybe. That's a, that's a big maybe if I charge everything at once. Um, so you're questioning how have I ever reached the 500 and blew out this, the, um, the fuse. Quick answer. Every machine that you have has a peak wattage and a usage wattage. Um, when you use a machine, it will stay on, on a relatively good watts uh, or stable watts. But it has a surge peak in the beginning and that's where my fridge comes in. The fridge uses about 50 or 65 watts on a stable note and then it drops off when it doesn't need to cool anymore. But when it needs to cool, it kicks into gear, it shoots up to about 600 watts and then drops off all the way to 65 and then drops off to zero again because it doesn't need to cool anymore. Hence, why the fuse blew out. Fuse was up to 500, the peak of my fridge was up to 600, 600 something, so the fuse blew. I put in a 60 amp fuse and problem has been gone since um, so yeah that's that's the whole grid setup now over here you can see this machine is a switch which puts on all my electronics that goes on 12 volt so my water pump oh the fridge as well has a 12 volt and I don't know so something else must have been a 12 volt as well but yeah this turns off all my 12 volt uh, equipment that little thingy over there has fuses, so if your equipment has shortages, this will um, blow out and yeah, basically save everything. So, as I said, this video pure information for your use to add on your pile of information. Use the blueprint 
of by nomads i will link them in the description it helped me out so much even if it's in dutch there's still like the numbers of, of um wire thickness that you need to use because some um wires you need to use 50 square millimeters i believe it's called square millimeters um some wires you need to use 16 some machines use 10 it's it's all over the place and yes i can go in depth and explain it to you all but the video would be 30 minutes long so to save you guys some <laughs> boring super long video it is super helpful to print out the blueprint and just scribble on it yes i need this no i don't need this uh, blah 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 um so yeah without dragging this on for any longer uh i hope this video was in informational enough <laughs> i hope you got out the information that you need and if there is any questions just ask in the comment section i will see you in the next video